All right. And we are here. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Think About It. I'm Roger Williams, your host here tonight in the sanctuary of the First Baptist Church of Glen Cove. Thank you for coming on and being with us on this very special evening. It is Women's History Month, and we're looking forward to a wonderful engagement with our guests tonight. We hope that you have time to stick around and stay with us. There are those of you who are on Zoom. We thank you for joining <laughs> us tonight. And uh, we also will be, we are at this moment now streaming live. So we thank God for all of you who are sharing with us tonight. I'll introduce our guests officially here in just a few moments. Uh, I do want to remind all of you today as we view the things that are happening in the world, let us always remember celebration of the demise of any man or woman, whether they have been evil or good, is never a part of the Christian agenda, and it should not be seen in the character of those who share space in the body of Christ and those who have faith in our Lord. My brother, my sister, what we should be rejoicing in is whenever justice and good prevails over evil and bad, and no other person should consume our attention so much that we're happy to see their demise. What we should be happy about is the prevailing possibilities and probabilities of justice in our world. Just a word for you as we start our time tonight. Once again, thank you for joining us, but think about it here tonight, your host with you, Roger Williams. I wanna introduce our guest here tonight. This is a compassionate, creative, powerful woman of God that we have with us tonight. And I want to start by sharing with you uh, when she was examined by the Eastern Baptist Association of New York, this guest is the first woman ordained to the gospel ministry by order of the Historic Union Baptist Church in Hempstead, Long Island, New York, the first woman ordained to the gospel ministry. And right now she is uh, the host of Church Talk Radio, www.churchtalkradio.com. And it can also be seen simultaneously on Facebook Live, Roku TV, and YouTube, 1 p.m. to 2.30. Uh, and I'm going to get that date uh, from her, the, the Fridays, Fridays. Uh, and the uh, host of the show, she's the host of the show, and the name of that show, of course, is Sitting with Sister Minister. And uh, right now, I do have to tell you this. She is getting ready now to put forward uh, her first book project, A Labor of Love, entitled The Three R's, Race, Rape, and Roosevelt, The Conspiracy to Destroy the Village. We're going to talk about that tonight with the sister minister, my special guest tonight, the Reverend Dr. Sarita C. McKnight. Dr. McKnight, thank you so much for consenting to be here with us. And now we're here together. How are you doing tonight? You're muted. You're muted. <laughs> yeah. That big is all right. <laughs> Thank all right. you so much for your graciousness. I'm doing well this evening for the purposes of our, our discourse. Sure, Soretta will make you feel better. Soretta. So. <laughs> all right. I got it. I got it. So, Get me straight. So. I have no problems with that. It's okay. Really, as long as you don't call me late to dinner, we cool. But, <laughs> but thank you so much for being so gracious, my brother, and to invite me on uh, to this awesome uh, broadcast, this presentation that you do. Uh, think think about it. And you already have given us food for thought. Uh, yeah. Because we know you were talking about that orange guy for sure. Yes. Uh, but the good news the first thing, though, uh, Pastor, is that there are folk who claim our Christ, but do not act that way. So I concur that we celebrate no one's demise, but we do celebrate justice. Amen. So with that said, thank you again. Thank you, Dr. McKnight, for that. I, and, and, and it certainly means a lot. Uh, this is Women's History Month, and I certainly want to talk about women in ministry with you. I believe it is a subject matter in which the church has not had an adequate conversation about. And I'd like to get some of your thoughts on that. But I want to first talk about some things that you're doing. Okay. Uh, and we just talked about it on church, church Talk Radio. Just clarify with us the day and time that you are, are sharing with the public at uh, from your show. 
Well, we broadcast live every Friday from 1 to 2 p.m. at churchtalkradio.com. We're sitting with the sister minister. We believe an informed community is an empowered community, motivated to improve humankind. And every Friday from 1 to 2, it's all about you as we help you make the connection and connect the dots. And if you miss it live, you can go back to uh, Church Talk Radio uh, later on on Facebook. You can go to Roku TV. You can go to uh, YouTube. Listen, all those fabulous media platforms that folk use, pick right. one and go check it out. Very good, very good. And certainly I know that uh, uh, knowing your work in the community, having observed from the sideline, I'm still considered a newbie here, even though I've been here for a little while here at First Baptist. But once I came to New York, uh, Dr. Sarita McKnight's name and work has already been afoot, but I, I and and we're going to talk some more about that. Let's talk about this book on the way. When I read what this book is going to be about, this is riveting. Let's talk about it again. The three R's: race, rate, and Roosevelt. The the conspiracy to destroy a village. And I know we want people to read your book, but. What can you tell us about what's coming that is of interest to us and, and why we ought to read it? It's over two decades in the making. Okay. Uh, it is truly a labor of love. We're just about there. And as soon as we are, I'm going to, of course, reach back out to you to say, oh, could you have me on? But uh, <laughs> primarily what it is, we consider Roosevelt to be the, the center of God's universe. All right. uh, when you talk in terms of one square mile that I grew up in, uh, all those many years ago, especially when the change, I was here uh, before the change happened and when the change happened with respect to our parents having to march for us to get admitted into the brand new elementary school that was built, the primary school, excuse me. But, uh, and so we, we've struggled through that and struggled through white flight, if you will. And the reality is that at one point, Roosevelt, was had the largest concentration of people of the African diaspora mm. per square mile than any place else on the planet. Wow. Yeah, wow. in terms of our contiguous continental US. And so uh, it was. it's a village. We've always had it before uh, Hillary Clinton decided to enlighten other folk we always were a village that operated together, that neighbors looked out for neighbors, that, that we were a community in common unity. There were entrepreneurs. There was a, a, Roosevelt had it going on. And then what happens is when you have a system that is put in place where resources are drawn out, when you have a high tax rate, um, a low, low uh, income, if you will, um, high tax, low wealth. That's what I'm really trying to get to. Then you have an erosion of a system that had been put in place to educate. Now, I came through there uh, with the Regents Diploma many years ago. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, I'll never forget when I first went on the school board and everybody's running around uh, talking about uh, Regents equivalency tests and oh, and how well our children do. And I was a little stumped. I said, well, I've been out of this for a minute, so let me just check it out, mm -hmm. do some research. Come to find out. Come to find out. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. That's okay. That's all right. Okay. Um, that uh, Come to find out that a region's competency test, RCTs, that was not a region's diploma. You know, if you had a region's during my, in, uh, during my time in school, it meant you could go to any school that offered Regents curricula and you should be able to pass whatever tests they put in front of you. That's how competitive we were. And so what happened, the standard of excellence that surrounded our school district had eroded. Okay. When people in charge are just looking for our children to do the minimal, you know, that's not to be celebrated. You're not doing your job. I don't blame the children. Yeah. I blame those who or identify those who stood before them and miseducated. So what you have is a system that we tried to correct from the inside out. And my book, Rape, Race, and Roosevelt, The Conspiracy uh, to Destroy the Village, is a byproduct of my school board when I was president, having been the only school board in the history of the state to be removed. 
We were the only elected school by uh, the only elected officials in the village of Roosevelt were the school board. And so we had our rights taken away, stripped, and don't misunderstand, there were folk who supported that move. But now here we are a few decades later, and the story has turned because a lie can't live forever. And so what we see in this climate now, when I started this writing, I had no idea how intense the, the struggle was that we were in. But that's what God will do. God will keep you on a path, protect you. So that when you finally do take a step back, it's like, really? And, and so that's basically what the book is about. The book is about a system that uh, by design was trying to uh, destroy yeah. our community. Because how do you move a mass of people? You tax them out of their home. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so basically that was the genesis plus the fact I wanted to wait until all those so-called experts and, and professionals finish their critique. Because if you go back and do the research, you will find that the press was, I don't read Newsday to this day because of the hatchet job, the half truths, and it was just cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, but we stood and my daddy and, and, and mama La always said, if you can stand to wait, the truth is bound to come. Oh, yeah. And so we had good support. We had um, uh, my big brother, Reverend Al. Yeah. He supported with National Action Network. You know, we go back to the original uh, board of that organization. Uh, we had a couple other folk. Then we have folk who were on the other side who have since uh, changed their tune because me today, you tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. But that's basically what it's about. And and folk will get it from someone who was there, who actually was uh, one of the principals there in, in terms of the attack, because you know this, when you are out front, yeah, you may get a few compliments. Yeah. But the reality is when you're out front, no matter whether it's, it's compliment or not, you're going to take the hit first. That's right. And if you can't stand the heat, get out the kitchen. So, you know, thanks be to God for my parents. I was well prepared yeah. uh, for the journey that had been laid out. Yeah. Uh, Dr. McKnight is a graduate of Syracuse University. I want to add that as I go toward uh, letting her know that uh, Dr. McKnight, as soon as that book comes out, you make sure you get in contact with me. We're going we to do a review right here with everyone and hopefully uh, get everyone interested in reading it and, and, and be a part of, uh, of the action uh, agencies of change. Uh, I, I mentioned this is Women's History Month, and, and mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I certainly wish that I had done more this month, uh, bringing more people on, but one person I've been wanting to have is you. And, I, and since viewing you from afar and meeting you, I've always been interested in knowing your journey. And I want to start tonight by letting you share some of that with our audience. Let's first talk about your calling to the ministry. And we're going to get into some wider, uh, more wide ranging issues and, and conversations. But I want to start with God tapped you on the shoulder and said, I need you to be a part of my network. Let's share that with our audience tonight. But God ain't tapped me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if I may be completely transparent. All right, that's all right. Uh, <laughs> But I tell you, what had happened, coming through the experience of doing the work I felt I was called to do, mm -hmm. you know, uh, to enlighten our communities, to empower our communities, to use my voice as an agent for those who uh, were disenfranchised, for those who were considered less than. Yeah. And so what happens, my, my role as an activist, and certainly on national platforms, uh, was well underway. I mean, I can go back to my childhood when I string it together. What, what I'm sharing, uh, Pastor Williams, is that some people talk in terms of, well, when God called me and they give you a Paul experience, a Paulian experience, yeah. I give you an experience or come from a situation where God covered, protected, and kept me. 
And mm-hmm. even, you know, when you can stand next to somebody who somebody wants to kill and still be covered because you're fighting for those who have been uh, the least, the less, and the less fortunate, all that was happening well before I answered my call. I see. So it, it's not a, in some instances, for some people, it is a singular, but for me, it was a journey. And I think that was because God had to line it up in such a way that even though I resisted, all right, Sarita, let's go. Get up, come on, let's go. You know, even when you stop to see where you are and you go to a point where maybe you start to lean toward a pity party. Yeah. Uh, feel and that's very real to feel bad to uh, get a sense of well why can't y'all get it but then when God says all right sit down for a minute I'll call you again mm-hmm. and uh, it was that kind of an experience as a result of uh, a few arrests for uh, civil disobedience mm-hmm. okay <laughs> as a, a, a result of um, speaking on different platforms working with women working with children And the hundred, the hundred, the million women's march was where I got the, because it was something. Usually uh, if we were protesting in the state, in Albany, walking to Albany, taking buses, transporting seniors, doing what we do, when we would have folks show up, when those instances and occasions came, we did the work, we did what had to be done. Mm -hmm. But then when they were planning for the uh, Million Women's March and and out here the Nassau County group, I had been a member the whole time, but I had gotten so disillusioned to a degree. But the thing that I've never done and never will do, you will not get me to have a family discourse in front of melanemic people, okay? I I just don't do that. If If it's an issue I have, that is one of those that um, uh, uh, is an internal matter, that's what we're going to deal with it, okay? We don't put our wash out, Mm -mm, not the dirty laundry, especially if it's not going to help. So so we had this, this, the Million Women's March was coming up, and Sister Emily Moore said to me, Sister, you going to get the buses, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, I'm not going. Mm -hmm. She said, what do you mean you're not going? Because I was, at that point, just exhausted. Yeah. And so what happened, she said, um, no, you can't quit now. I said, yeah, okay, watch me. <laughs> and so she said, well, I'm going to go get the bus then. I'll have to just get one. If you were doing it, we'd have a few. I said, that's fine, go ahead. I said, I'll tell you what, you get it and I'll get on it. Yeah. And that was the absolute definitive with yeah. respect to answering the call to not just activism, what I had been doing, but formal. What is it that God requires of us? Yeah. Do justice, love mercy, and walk honorably mm-hmm. with our God. Be faithful. So that it, it was a series of things, but that was where it climaxed. Yeah. And so that would I would call my definitive moment if I had to go to one moment as a result of all those other moments that led up to it. Very good. And I appreciate you sharing that with us. And um, g- growing up here on Long Island, am I correct about that? That's correct. I'm indigenous to Long Island. Yeah, and and coming along in the way that you have and being the first woman ordained, that that is certainly an achievement. And I know a narrow strip uh, of road where you won't find footprints in front of you. But let me ask you this question, Dr. Uh-huh. McDonald. Yes. And I'm listening to you talking tonight. Define for me, if you will, the gospel. What is the gospel? When we say I'm a preacher of the gospel, what does that mean? And what should that mean to some aspiring young person who wants to come into the ministry and do this work, who has the desire and God has impressed upon them to come in and do this work? Celebrity is not an option. Mm. Don't come into the work thinking you're going to be famous or that people are going to pat you on the back or, or that it's all about the style. You know, there when you talk about this work of ministry, you talk about the gospel, you talk about the good news, you talk about Christ. Yeah. It's all in a sermon walking as opposed to a sermon talking. What does that mean? That Well, it's something that said, oh, uh, cutesy tootsie. But think about that thing. Think about the fact that we are here to serve. 
So if you've been called to this, listen, you couldn't pay me to tell me I'd be doing what I'm doing now. <laughs> you couldn't. But when God impresses upon you that this, and, and adds up what your life's journey is going to be and starts pointing you in a direction that you can't get away from. Mm -hmm. Then you start studying that word. You start reading it. You look for the Holy Spirit to give you some, listen, the, the Holy Spirit and education is a dangerous combination. Mm -hmm. And so you, you look for that. You, you strengthen that prayer life. You talk to God. God will answer. Might not answer us all the same way. Yeah. But particular to what it is that your discourse is with the master and the result, as you well know, may not come right when you want, but always on time, you'll get the revelation. You'll get a yes, you get a no, you get a maybe, you get a watch, wait and see. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, if you are convicted and committed, God has a way of testing us to see if he can trust us, to see if she can trust us, to see if he can trust us and be able to place in our hand or, or to be selected to go forth in service. So what does it mean for those coming in now? Be prepared to serve. Yeah. Be prepared to serve not anybody that looks like you. Understand that coming into this work of ministry is not limited to preaching a sermon from the pulpit. Yeah. That's yeah. not the work of the ministry. That's a part of it. Yeah. Yeah. But the ministry is when you can walk, when you can see uh, uh, someone in need in your community and not turn this way as if you don't. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's the work. I, have you been to visit any sick folk lately? And you can't tell me, oh, well, can't go up and out. Well, baby, they got the technology now. <laughs> right. And we've always had the technology. It's just that now there's Zoom, Bloom, all these platforms, email. And we've always had me now. Yeah, yeah. Wireless technology. We ask our foremothers and forefathers about wireless technology, about, about uh, bending that knee, going yeah. on bended knee and saying, Father, I stretch mm -hmm. my hand to thee. And nowadays, mother, I stretch my hand to thee. Father, mother, God. You know, some people get very, oh, that's blasphemous. Why? No, it's not. It may be for you, but pray for some revelation, baby. <laughs> That's right. God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit, spirit and, in and in truth. And no respect of person. That's exactly right. So right. I'm not going to limit God because uh, <clears throat> we know that anything that human hand touches, especially with recording, it can almost be like operator. Yeah. yeah. That it starts out one way, but by the time it gets to the person at the end of the line, it's a little different. That's why we have to, above all our getting, get an understanding. Yeah. And what's the understanding? God is large and in charge. And if God called you to it, God will equip you for it. Amen. So that would be my word for that. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and thank you for that. I, I want to follow up here on something. And I want uh, your, your wisdom and uh, your passion here is compelling. I, I hear you talking about the least of these, uh, mm -hmm. those who are less fortunate. Um, I want to ask you, Sister Minister, mm -hmm. are we the church focused on that as much as we should be? You no. make a celebrity. Uh, sometimes, and I don't want to interject my viewpoints here too much, this interview is about your mind tonight, but I'm just wondering where you are on this. I see a lot of celebrity vibes moving and, and churches talking about looking out for the least of these, especially those who are crushed under the systemic realities that are unjust. Talk to us about what the church can do more in this area if there's more to do or we could do. Well, your broadcasters think about it. Okay. <laughs> right. So, and, and I appreciate the discourse, my brother, because everybody doesn't have it. Uh, when we talk about, there's a couple of things. When we talk about the church, there is the church and then there's the building. Yes. There's the church and then there's the church house. Now, God decided to let us understand that there is the building and community fellowship is good. But look at when all everything just shut down because of that little virus. Sure. Sure. 
Just think about that for a minute. Everything came to a screeching halt before folk were embracing the, the technology. They weren't embracing it like they are now. Yeah. Is the church doing enough? Organized religion, in my estimation, is not doing enough. Yeah. How many folk do we have? How many church leaders are speaking out against that far right wing evangelical claiming to love Christ, but their actions don't say? Yeah. What about an organized group of baptized, quote unquote, believers? It's the same type thing. Now, listen, don't get me wrong, because there are some churches that are rocking and rolling, mm -hmm. that are doing the work of the ministry, that are feeding the hun hungry, that are clothing the naked. There are entities mm -hmm. that are doing, but we unfortunately have gotten caught up in a cycle of talking it, not walking it. Yeah. If it's your idea and it's gonna benefit the body, I want to encourage you. Come on with it. Okay. It's not about who's better, who's this, who's that. It's about service. When folk come into the church house on Sunday mornings for regular service, for Sunday school, regular service, come during the middle of the week for prayer service, because that's happening more again now, even with the hybrid models that have come out of COVID, which I think are fabulous because they are people who could not get uh, to the church house, but can still be connected virtually. So that's a good thing. But you don't know what that person has gone through to walk through those doors on a Sunday morning yeah. or on a Wednesday evening. You don't know. Yeah. Now, if we walk in the walk, discernment has to come into play. You might not know the issue, but you should be able to understand or relate or ask for some guidance in how you might be able to help them. Yeah. And I'm talking in the organized church. Well, that same kind of behavior, when you have folk coming in that are quote unquote unchurched, they don't need to be greeted at the door with no scowl. Yeah. Take your hat home. Well, if I'm unchurched and I don't know about church, but it's been laid on my heart to come on up in here, mm -hmm. that's the way that you have to do it. Right. So, I, I think those are some of the examples. Some people, <laughs> some people get excited to sit up front and in the pulpit and then, uh uh. Mm -hmm. Ain't no man or woman have a heaven or hell to put me in. <laughs> so we have to stay focused on the priority. Yeah. That's, that's sharing with folk. You asked me earlier about gospel, the good news. Yeah. That no matter how hard it gets, hold on, your change is going to come. And whatever I can do to help you get there, that's what we're going to do. I mean, oh, do we have health ministries that are functioning? Are there partnerships between churches where we are serving the greater good, the community? Yeah. I mean, and, and when you call our community, you talk about the black belt, right? But I'm a firm believer that the more folk know, the better the decisions they make. The more informed people are, the better decisions they can make. So when, when we talk about what we're doing, I have seen too much in the last uh, several years uh, of this whole celebrity thing. Okay. When I started out with Reverend Sharpton many years ago, it was the one organization in Brooklyn now we're coming up on our national convention. And although I don't serve on his board anymore, I could still pick up the phone and call my brother at any time I need help. He's been doing the work and the reality is folk have been benefiting, but he's been serving. Think of all these grief stricken families. Yeah. And I remember when we was put out of a building by Julianne. I remember, but he stayed focused and true to his calling. The boy preacher he was. Yeah. Okay, so he came up under some of the quote unquote greats of that day. Yeah. You know, so that's an example of a church that's not a formal church. Yeah, I understand that. You understand what I'm saying? So, so I think we need to do more. And, and keep in mind, people say, well, when you know who you are and who you are, well, what does that mean? <laughs> Let right. me share. Reverend Estrella Anderson 
was my pastor here uh, in Roosevelt. In other words, uh, uh, my, my mother's home church, uh, the Burwell side of the family, they're Hempstead. Maybe Burwell was part of that team that bought uh, the late great Reverend Dr. C.C. C. Moon. Yeah. In Freeport, at the Greater Second Baptist Church, Daddy Millet, that's uh, Reverend Eric's dad, yes. uh, was where my paternal uh, grandmother's roots were and my aunties and them. So you've got my Burwell side over at Union. You've mm -hmm. got the McKnight side at Greater. Then you have my uh, grandfather, my, my paternal grandfather, although I hear the stories and I would have loved to have met him, my mom's dad, but he had transitioned long before I came. But my dad's dad, him and Aunt Mitzi, they were at Bethel Freeport. And my godfather's the one who built the current edifice that's there. I'm telling you, the roots run deep. Yeah. And when yeah. your roots run that deep, you not only know who you are and who you are, but you acknowledge that you have to do the right thing. And Reverend Anderson, I can remember when, okay, we had a couple more folks over at Faith. But I can remember when she would let some of the guys, when they were younger, come. I was a kid. I was a child. They would come and preach from Calvary Baptist in Roosevelt. She was the founding pastor back then. Okay. Okay. A woman in the pulpit was not strange to me. Mm -hmm. Now, my, my uh, uncle and those who were at Little Zion, that's what it was then, became Zion Cathedral. But God bless that Bishop Frank Arthur White used to ride the back of my daddy's coal truck, oh, okay. ice truck, back in the day. So what I'm telling you is when the roots run that deep and when you're in a community that cares, then you have a greater understanding that it's not about you. Yeah. It's yeah. about common unity. Amen. If you do well, I do well. I do well, you do well. You Then once I do well and you do well, you got to make sure somebody else is doing well too. Amen. Amen. So a woman in the pulpit was never a foreign concept to me. Yes, yes, yes. A be be beautiful story. And, and there are more and more women coming into the work to do this work. Uh, however, many of them are young, may maybe a little inexperienced. Uh, Sister Minister, there, there are some of them perhaps are watching you tonight. What would be some, I, there are a couple of questions that I want to ask you about mm -hmm. women coming into ministry. Um, when you think about the challenges that women are facing now, and there have been some strides, but there's still challenges. We know oh, yeah. one or two of those challenges that step right out of your mind to us tonight. What are some of those challenges that women are facing tonight? The one thing about the sisterhood was the academy. Okay. Because being refused from uh, their gifts and talents in, in the church, they went to the academy. Okay. Now, and I encourage, even though undisciplined as I may be, okay, I encourage, especially now, younger sisters coming up to absolutely pursue that too. Yes. Um, my doctorate is an honorary doctorate. Mm -hmm. uh, and I am over the moon that a group at this uh, chaplaincy thought me worthy to do because of my, my service over the years, and to God be the glory. But I encourage them, go ahead and pursue the academy. Yeah. Check out the Reverend Dr. Margaret Elaine McCollins Flake. Check out her model yeah. of ministry. And Women in Ministry State of New York, we have, we're a place where we are encouraging those young voices to come on in. Look at, and, and I mentioned Dr. Flake because she's the esteemed pastor, right? Yes. Of the, the Greater Allen Cathedral, uh, yes. following uh, her husband, yes. the Reverend Floyd Flake. Um, she's in her third year. She is our model of ministry for women's day, okay? Uh, because her women's conference and her women's ministry and how she interacts and does and her understanding of what the sisterhood experiences, not just when we talk in terms of our calls or in terms of that whole ecumenical journey, but in terms of being females in a male-dominated sphere mm -hmm. that a, 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 a modern-day patriarchal system, if you, if you would, and being able to understand that you've got to have some faith, you've got to develop some trust, 
you've got to understand that nothing happens overnight that is sustainable. You've got to be ready for the marathon and not the sprint. And if God finds you faithful, trust and believe your gifts will always make room for you. Now, there's plenty of naysayers. I don't want anybody to get the wrong idea and think I had cruise control. It's not even like that. (laughs) <laughs> but you get to a point where you understand the battle's not mine. Okay? And so you you adjust according. So what am I saying? Pursue the academy. Pursue your gifting and your talent. Be clear that when God calls you to it, mm-hmm. God will take you through it. Right. And, and so, listen, in the 23rd Psalm, it talks about, yea, though I walk through yeah. the valley. So that means you're going to pass through some low time. Mm-hmm. But the good news is that there is value. That's what Van Zant says. Iyanla. There is value in the valley. Yeah, yeah. Then you have role models. Look at Bishop Cynthia Lynette Hale, hey, the yeah. president of the largest convening of ministers and preachers on the planet. The Hampton Ministers Conference. Well, she's our visionary enthusiast. That's where Wimsney was born out of Dr. Hale's movement. All right. So, and then look at the conference preacher for Hampton, the Reverend Dr. Gina Marcia Stewart. Are you kidding me? There are sisters doing it, right. you know, and, and there are role models. Look at Regine, Renita Jean Weems, yeah. another one. She, she is uh, our trailblazer. Represented, And we have awards named for these sisters that every so many years we give out. The last set we gave out was in the delegate dining room of the United Nations. So what I'm saying is don't go in it for the celebrity. Don't go in it so you could run up on so-and-so or you could do such and such. No, no, no. The first and foremost, God. Yeah. Because all that we are doing in the dash is so that we can get back into the relationship with God that only happens through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So, so God bless you. What, what, yeah, rich word, rich word. Listen, tonight, everyone, thank you. This has been, this is, this is a great interview. We have a few more things we want to cover tonight with the sister minister. She's the Reverend Sarita uh, C. McKnight. Sarita. Sarita, Sarita, I keep saying Sarita. I, 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 Just think I, of feeling I, better. Might think be my southern better. lingo thing going on here. Sarita. Now, Doc, yeah. think of feeling better. You'll get Sarita. All right. <laughs> and and uh, you will not be able to, to slip that as your southern listen. Yeah, that's right. Talking that's about being in, look, no. I'm being indigenous here. I am. But my yes. people are all up south. They came up south. Up south. Okay. Right. From the Tar Heel State of North Carolina. East there you of go. North Carolina. <laughs> Is the maternal side, and down in the low country outside Buford, Gamma C, is the yes. paternal side. Hello, somebody. All right, all right. Dr. Soretta C. McKnight, tonight right here on Think About It. She's my special guest as we're celebrating Women's History Month. Let me draw up a, an image in your mind, if you mm-hmm. don't mind, Dr. McKnight. Go right ahead. I'm going to give you now a room, and in there are about 20 pastors. And the subject matter is women in ministry. Mm-hmm. What are two important things that men, pastors, men in ministry, men who are preachers need to hear from women without us interrupting and talking? What are some of the things that men need to hear? For example, um, and there are shout out to all those sisters who are pastoring, who have founded ministries because they couldn't have outlets yeah. uh, where they were. First and foremost, and I, I, I'm honored to have been ordained by Eastern. Yes. There was not a woman on the panel. Yeah. Why is that? I can remember hearing, oh, you know, a woman will never leave Eastern. And I can remember hearing it, being in the room with it, and giving one of my classic, really? (laughs) Now I look today, and this is going back some years. Now I look today, and I see the Reverend Patricia Rickenbacker, 
as the vice moderator for Nassau County. Amen. She sure is. So uh, it, it, change comes. I, I think that there has to be real inclusivity. Yeah. You can't talk about being progressive and inclusive and then ignore the gifted and talented you have yeah. because they don't agree with you. Yeah. And brother pastors have a knack sometimes for not, for getting in the way of. Mm -hmm. and what do I mean? In other words, if God has blessed and gifted and kept you, and you have sisters that are gifted, that are talented, that, that can do, then make room. Amen. Make room. And don't be threatened by it. So I, I would, and I've seen it, you know, there, there are pastors I work with, it's just that they're very progressive and, and they be walking, uh, they walk the talk, but don't be exclusive. Yeah. If God is no respecter of person, why are you? Amen. Why are you, why is it that you'll hear, and, and I heard it in some rooms, why is it that you, oh, I need more men? Really? Okay, why? <laughs> How about you need some more saved folk? How about you need some more uh, folk that exhibit that Christian character? Yeah. You know, oh, so and so. And another thing, those double-edged swords, let's throw them out. All right. Okay, Let the double-edged sword, you know, the backhanded compliment. <laughs> you know, don't, don't talk under a sister's skirt. You don't need to be talking about how her legs look. You understand what I'm saying? That those little, it's not cute. Yeah. And one of the reasons, <laughs> I know we laugh now because, but one of the reasons that uh, sometimes uh, folk will see me coming and go the other way is because, you know, when you walk into a room and you a follower of the way, Jesus Christ being the way, right. it's being supposed to shift, it's supposed to change. Mm -hmm. And, and you can't think that you can live any kind of way and then expect folk to follow you. Because yeah. then if you take that hard fall and turn around, you look, nobody behind you, you're taking a walk. Yeah, yeah. So, though, and be kind, you know. Um, I believe that there's a difference between uh, men and women, between uh, male and female. Different functions. Same God. Yes. And, and if we do things centered there, if we understand that children can be gifted and talented, yeah. Yeah. some might be gifted to preach, some to serve on the usher's bed. How about let's train them? If the Bible says train up a child in the way they should go, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. hmm? What are we doing? We don't put children in church going to die. That's or right. at least go on life support because God takes care of God's own. Yeah. Yeah. So those would be those would be some of the things that I would tell my brothers. Be transparent. Yeah. Okay. And don't be trying to run around and get with this one, get with that one, or you know, it's just stupid. <laughs> oh, right. Time is winding up, you know. Yes. And and I say the same to, to uh sisters who are in charge. Yeah. Yeah. You ain't got to try and do what they do. Mm -mm. Do what God has for you to do. And, and you know, my brother, uh, this has been a journey for me that I'm still on. Yeah. So it's not, I know, I don't know it all, but yeah, I got some experiences mm -hmm, yeah. that we don't mind sharing with our sisters. And one of the things I have never done, I've never been one of those uh, uh, women who chime in on degrading other women. Mm -hmm. I've never been one of those. I thank God that I haven't been, you know, like that. Uh, I think part of that evolves from the bad rap that the sisterhood has gotten. When you've got a male standing up in the pulpit or anybody up there that is constantly, you know, uh, are we going to talk about uh, uh, Vashti? Vashti, Vashti, are we going to talk about how she's been portrayed? Okay, oh, she wasn't obedient. She wasn't, oh, they threw her out. They didn't, no, no, no. Because if there had not been a Vashti, there'd be no Esther. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Are, are we going to to shun folk like even yesterday? Remember yesterday's Sunday school lesson, the Samaritan woman, mm -hmm. and uh, people, you know, everybody, yeah, the heat of the day because she was embarrassed. Or well, was she embarrassed? <laughs> or maybe she just didn't want to hear the nonsense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, in other words, let's delve a little deeper. Let's not just preach about Jezebel. Yeah. Although it's an, an important thing. Mm -hmm. And what about Bathsheba? Oh, she seduced David. She ain't seduced him. She was minding her own business when he crept, was creeping. <laughs> that's Stop right. It. Okay, and I didn't make it up. It's in the Bible. Yeah, that's right. It's right there. You know, Eve made me. I mean, you hear this over the... You know, huh? Yeah, Eve did so, he, like Eve was such a demon. Stop it. Yeah, yeah. And, and you want to one on one hand talk about God made you the head of the house. Okay, well, act like it. <laughs> all right, all right. Okay? Uh, because if you are it and you believe it, then you're gonna carry yourself in such a way. Yeah. But when you gotta constantly tell or remind someone, I'm the head of the are you? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But now. Eve, the woman, the woman made me do it. Stop it. <laughs> now, see, that's what happened when Moses and them boys put that stuff down. They was getting it a little, you know, make a little, but come on here now. Yeah, yeah. So, so we've got to get our exegesis together when it comes to how we view women in the Bible. We got to As do opposed to, no, exegete what's there. Yeah. Okay, pull out what's there. Yeah. Let, well, eisegesis is what too many people do. <laughs> okay, right. they isogee the text. Yeah, that's yeah. the I, me, mine. Right. right. Go on and take that and get lost with it. <laughs> and, and, and the gospel is not, 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 not difficult. The story, what we're supposed to do, it's not a hard thing to, to, to. Swallow. It's the disobedience that keeps getting up in the way. It's folk dogging folk out. No, that doesn't help anybody. People are quick to talk about our children and walking around this way and doing it. Well, we're the ones who drop the ball if that's what's happening. Amen. 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 Okay. Yeah. So it's it's a lot, but you know, together, lots of hands can make light work. Yeah. And and so sisters in the struggle, um, mm. other organizations, see some people birth children, I birth works. All right. So, Sisters in the Struggle, we celebrate the sisterhood heroes, and we've been doing it for a quarter of a century, and the brotherhood are our champions. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, they're a little behind us. You know, they're like 20 years old or so, something like that. Wednesday, we celebrate the sisterhood, and we're, we're planning again for our next gathering. For example, on April 5th, if I could just be shameless in my plug, That's we're going right. to be over at the Hollywood Full Gospel uh, Baptist Cathedral over there on Great Neck Road, Bishop Andy C. Luda. Uh, yeah. When we do his words, her voice yeah. on April 5th. See, because his words and her voice yeah. always sound different. Yeah, of course. And it should, so it should sound different. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. because we are different, but we're serving the same God. That's going to take place 6 30, doors open, and 7 o'clock, the service is going to be. And when I tell you, that there is a lineup, a diverse lineup of pastors and preachers. Uh, these sisters, this is our first time coming back together after the pandemic. It's our 11th annual. We still did it through the pandemic, you know, electronically, but here we are back live and in person. And if I could just share with you that uh, Elder Robin Alford, uh, Pastor Pamela Ward, Pastor KC Jones, Pastor Reverend Joyce Duggar, uh, that's Dr. KC Jones, excuse yes. me. Um, Pastor Elder Bettina Pennant and uh, 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 Sister Pepper Martin, Dr. Pepper Martin, and of course I'll be be there also. And and we are going to share what thus saith the Lord. Everybody got their word; they know what they're going to do. And nobody, I have yet to have one of these services that I've hosted, and anybody come back comparing and contrasting, except that I got this from this one, I got that from that one, I got the my goodness, I didn't think of it that way. So I invite everybody to come on out. We do Wednesday night because we are not getting ready to try and compete with Good Friday. Okay. But we will virtually. In other words, it will air on yeah. sitting with the sister minister. Everybody gets five to seven minutes to hit it and quit it. <laughs> the closer gets a little bit longer. And we've been doing it for 11 years with this organization. Uh, you, you've got me excited about uh, seeing this. I'm, I'm looking forward to it, Dr. Soretta. 
Just run around that one more time to show you I got it. <laughs> Listen, you, you have been very modest. You have been very modest. You talk about on the sidelines, but I'm sure as your people well know, you are one of those quiet stones. Oh, and you not think that folk don't recognize or see uh, what it is that you have done and are doing. You know, when we used to cross paths, if you if you recall back, <laughs> excuse me, back in the day, yes. it was at different functions or different events, yeah. whether rally or breakfast, and your demeanor has been consistent. I'm yeah. happy to say that about you, my brother. Thank you so much. Thank and you. keep doing what you're doing and having people think about it. Yes, yes. Stop and yeah. think. Yeah. Yeah. And we ain't even talk about our social justice issues. Yeah, I, I, going I, on. we have to do it another time. We're going to do it another time. We're going to do it another time. Yes, we 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 don't want to press the crowd too much, but I do want to get one more yes. uh, thing registered with you here tonight. I, and 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 I know we say we keep around 40, 45 minutes, but I got to. Uh, we we got a lot of hurt women in the world. We got a lot of hurt women in the world. Mm -hmm. They've mm -hmm. been hurt by someone. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they hurt themselves, just like men do, but that we've true. got a lot of hurt women in the world. I know I'm giving you a big, large screen, and I know we're going to come back and mm -hmm. talk about social justice and things like that. You know how I feel about that. Right. What, 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 how do we, how do we talk to the uplift, the healing, the restoration of our women across the board, young, middle-aged, older women? Talk, talk to that for me for a moment before we leave. We can gather together yes. uh, in person or virtually, but there, there needs to be, you know, we are touchy-feely people. We are huggers, we are criers, we laugh, we are leaders, we are parents, you know, spouses. I mean, the list goes on. One of the things that I have unfortunately uh, experience coming out of uh, this massive uh, pandemic where everything just shifted. You already had folk that were hurt and hurting, but that isolation took things into another whole direction. Yeah. And I have never counseled so much. Mm. I have never listened so long to the pain that the isolation brought on. And so when you take that and couple it with whatever preceded that, somebody who was already in a distant space, and then you add that on top of it, you compound it, and you get the results of so much stuff that we're seeing now, how do we address it? We address it through organizations, we address it through into action, get yourself a good girlfriend too. And get yourself some counseling if you need it. Yeah. You know, there had been such a negative vibe about counseling, seeking help. At some point in time, we all need help. Yeah. And there's no shame or harm or embarrassment to go and get help. If you fall down and bang your head, you go into the doctor. Yeah, that's right. If, if, if your heart starts straining on you, you go into the ER, right? Yeah. So if, if, if your socket has gotten overloaded, nothing wrong with getting, getting help. Mm -hmm. And so that becomes a, it, it's not an either or, Roger. It's, it's a and two. Yeah. It is a holistic approach. Mm -hmm. and, and that is something I'm finding lacking in some instances. Now, and I'm going to see if I get this information to you to, to share, like um, Reverend Huard, uh, Reverend Burgess Huard out in Suffolk. Okay. Uh, I know there's a whole mental health thing going to be going on for the island, as well as uh, with um, uh, Dr. Rickenbacker, and they have professionals coming in there. You can go and sign up and see about your, your uh, uh Church folk, uh, uh, your leadership, getting some training. There's leadership development courses. There are There is so much out there. And turn the television off. 
<laughs> the news came on tonight, the first five stories. I mean, I got a headache. I said, I can't, I can't. You, I can't. It's depressing. Facebook, limit your time. Use it for information, sure, somewhat, but limit your time on, on the outlets. There comes a time you just got to be still. And as I said, seek help. And I pray that the confidentiality factor resumes with those who are in leadership. Amen. Okay. Amen. That that come that nobody wants to go and confide in a pastor that on Sunday morning is telling all your stuff. Right. <laughs> right. I, I'm just keeping it real. Yes. I'm being authentic. Look, if anybody's toes are crunching, that's a good thing. You, that means you're just you're uncomfortable. That means that you're seeing yourself. So if you are, the beauty about the God we serve is that Jesus allows for there to be, a, in this season of resurrection, for there to be a resurgence and identity. Lord, have mercy on me, O son of day. Okay, so you get what I'm saying? There's room for redemption across the board. But you have to be prepared to walk that walk. And it's a tough walk when you're in leadership dealing with so many different folk if you ain't got a good prayer life in a relationship with the most high. So, so that's, that's what I would say about that, beloved. I hope that answered somewhat that- Yes, you did. Yes, you did. You've been lovely and you've been profound tonight. And I certainly want to say I've felt ministered to tonight. And I thank you for sharing with us tonight. I, I wish we could go on and we will have another moment and opportunity together. I Absolutely. promise you that. And I promise our people that tonight who are with us. Uh, streaming, God bless them. God bless them. Yeah, yeah, streaming live on Facebook and there are those of us here on Zoom tonight. I want to thank all of you for joining us tonight on Think About It. I'm your host, Roger Williams, here in the sanctuary of the First Baptist Church of Glen Cove. Our special guest tonight has been the Reverend Dr. Soretta McKnight. She is a wonderful individual. We're looking forward to that book coming out. When it comes out, we are getting ready to talk about it and uh, think about it and yeah. share it with other people. So we thank you, uh, Dr. McKnight. Any closing words you'd like to share with us before we conclude? We should have it before the year is out. Uh, Kevin Thorborn is helping me with the self-publishing. He's one of our champions. We have a network of folk that we refer folk to. Feel free to reach out if need be. Let me say, may God's richest benediction be for all of you. And may you continue to uh, do the right thing, do the uh, work that's necessary and keep following great leadership. That's not a bad thing either. <laughs> Yes. And so that's it. I just say thank you to you, beloved. Thank you for having me. Thank you. You know, I'm usually on the other side of them. Yes, uh, right. That's right. Uh, this has been an absolute joy. And I, I thank you so much for providing the opportunity. Yes, beloved. Yes. Yeah, so just, just one more time. Uh -huh. your, the day, time of your show and where it can be heard. One more time. Oh. At churchtalkradio.com, it's sitting with the sister minister every Friday from one to two. It's all about you as we help you make the connection and connect the dots. You can see rebroadcasts on Facebook at churchtalkradio.com. You can see it on Roku, Buku, YouTube, all those other social media <laughs> uh, platforms. Uh, sitting with the sister minister every Friday uh, from one to two. So thank you so much, beloved. Thank you so much. Once again, our special guest, Dr. McKnight, we'll be seeing her once again soon. Thank you all for being with us tonight on Think About It. We'll be back next Monday night, same place, same time, Monday at 7 p.m. for Think About It. Until then, may the Lord bless you is my prayer.